Let's have some fun with sketch effects or pencil drawing effects in DaVinci Resolve and Fusion. In this tutorial I will first show you some completely different ways how I can create this effect. There is a pre-built Resolve FX effect. I can also use a Fusion filter tool and I will explain a little bit what a filter tool is and you learn a bit about edge detection and some interesting concepts underneath the hood. And then finally there's also a 3D option to use 3D materials in order to build a sketch effect. So let's see what this is about. Now when we have the effect however we create it, then in part two of this tutorial I want to show you how I can combine this effect with some actual digital drawing to make it a bit more dynamic and more unique. Just a reminder for those of you who are watching this tutorial as it is being released, I am currently running a DaVinci Resolve mini contest where I am asking you to take photographs from the contest and build something interesting from them, some animation, some effect, uh, something creative. And one option could be to do a sketch effect. Now if that's something you want to try then sign up for the contest and good luck for that. And now to the tutorial. Let me start with the easiest effect, the Resolve FX from the edit page, color page or from Fusion. In each case under Open FX filters Resolve FX you find the pencil sketch effect. You see here the preview, I'll drop this in and under effects you see the different options. You can do it in color which often looks a bit like watercolor like but black and white I find usually looks better. And we have the strength which can make it harder or softer, detection threshold where you can thin it out a little bit, uh, stroke length makes often these like star shaped uh, I don't know how is this drawing pattern called where you, you, you cross out like everything. Let me not do that. And then we have tonal adjustments where you can decide if you want a bit more emphasis on the shadows, on the highlights or where you want the detail. And often I find that we just have too much detail and you can, can try if you can, can adjust this in a way that yeah, you don't see too much of the original image and see more of the drawing and depending on the tonal range of the image you might end up with different, different settings for this. We do have these texture controls here. If I bring the amount up you see what it is. So this is a texture which is just put on top and if you exaggerate it like this it basically looks like, like it's raining, you know. But I have seen this type of effect quite a few times in different cartoon style animations where they give you an additional, I don't know, grain type of effect but like more longer lines that gives an idea of of drawing lines um, which are just being added on top to give some detail especially in areas where you don't have drawing or where, where you have constant color and where the effect itself wouldn't give you anything otherwise. So if you like it play with it, um, if not bring this dial down to zero and then it's gone. This tool here gives you a good starting point but it's probably not all you want to do. If you want to do a few quick adjustments uh, and if you're familiar in the color page you can do a few steps right away there. So if I want to change the paper color for example I can just push in a bit of color with a you know gain maybe make it a bit beige or yellow. If I wanted to invert it, so if I don't want black strokes on white paper but the other way around, let me reset this. If I want to invert it, the fastest way to switch black and white is just use the curves editor and bring black up and white down and then we have a negative. Um, so negative on this pencil sketch just means sketch with white on black. And this way you could refine this further, maybe add some blur or contrast operations or stuff like that to, to refine that in addition. If I do more in the color page I might as well do the effect itself in the color page so I can do processing before and after if I want to. So you also find the pencil sketch in the same category on the color page and could use it from here. However, I want to head over into Fusion where I can show you some more custom ways of building this effect and I might as well end up with a slightly different effect. So here I am in Fusion, same clip but I'm starting from scratch and from the shift spacebar menu I bring in a filter. And a filter has different uh, options for different filter effects here. So relief is a bit like an engraving and boss over is kind of a relief on top of or like an edge uh, emphasis on top of 
the existing uh, image appears a little bit like, like sharpening, although it's not exactly the same, but similar. Um, defocus is kind of a blur and Sobel is the one I want to use, which is a edge detection filter. So that's also very useful for other VFX purposes when you want to find edges where yeah, you have abrupt contrast changes, abrupt color changes, and you want to find these edges in order to do some effect on them or to uh, process them in some way. For example, for keying, you might look for the edge of a keyed person and then uh, do edge processing. So this filter can help with that. Let me, for some background knowledge, give you some information how that filter works. And if you're not interested, just skip to the next chapter. But I know many of you like some background information. So let me show you a different filter tool called Custom Filter. And that tool kind of explains what a filter is. Uh, let me bring it in on the left. So by default, you see nothing happens here. Well, actually, something happens, but not much visible. Uh, so what this filter tool does is it takes a pixel and then the pixel is represented in the center and then sums together for this pixel the pixels that are around. So imagine you're looking at this pixel like zooming really, really far in. Here's one pixel, right? That pixel gets a certain value and then is summed together with neighboring pixels. And depending on how you do that, you either get a blurring if you're kind of averaging the pixels around, um, or you are getting some form of, of uh, sharpening or edge detection or other effects. So what happens if I take the pixels that are around, and there we have one, two, three, you know, eight, eight pixels around, and if I offset this with minus eight for the center pixel, uh, that means I'm subtracting the pixel from its neighboring pixels. So if the neighboring pixels are identical, so if I have no color change, then the result is zero and I'm getting transparent. If the neighboring pixels are different, so if I have a change of color or an edge, then I get a value in this uh, in this pixel operation. And that's pretty much what a Sobel filter is. Uh, you know, the, the values here might be different. There are different ways of building these filters, but this already illustrates the, the idea. Now, working here with numerical values is obviously um, unconvenient. I just wanted to show you that this is basically how we can find edges. Uh, if you wanted to do something similar, you could also uh, do it the following way. You could use a blur and a merge node. And then from the original image, kind of subtract or build the difference, where the difference with a blurred image. And that's also giving you something like this. And depending on how much you blur, you are getting slightly different result. Uh, some people call this approach a high pass filter uh, because what you're doing is you take the original image and then the blurred image you might call like a lower frequency version of the original image. Now frequency doesn't refer to frequency of light, but more like spatial resolution. Um, if you have heard of Fourier transforms and or, or certain forms of audio processing, then you would be familiar with that idea and that language. Uh, but the idea is you have less detailed content or lower frequency content and you remove that content from the original, which includes the more detail or higher frequency. And that's uh, the idea of, of this approach. And the, what is remaining are the details, or in this case, like the edges in, in a way. I will probably not do this like this myself, but just use the filter tool directly. Uh, let's go from this filter tool towards the final result. This gives me transparency, which is great for other VFX work, but in this case, I probably want a background, so I will just merge it over a background. A simple merge. Now I have a background color to choose from, and the output will look like this. If you don't want the color pixels, if you want it again black and white, a simple color corrector or brightness and contrast will do. Brightness and contrast, I can just desaturate it. Or if you want the negative here, you can also do it. Just switch black and white, and black point is controlled via gain, white point via lift. So if I switch those, lift to one, gain to zero, I have a negative image. Just some manual ways to, to do those things in Fusion. 
Now, the thing where I wanted to show it to you in Fusion is on the one hand to explain how these filters are working because this kind of knowledge is always interesting, but also show you uh, if I understand this, I also have some ideas of how I might further process it if I'm not immediately satisfied with the initial result. For example, I might add a blur before the filter because I know the filter is detecting edges. If I blur before, I'm reducing some detail in the image, which should give the filter a different uh, yeah, image to work on and give me a different result. And you see what's happening here on the right side. So let me show you the blur on the left and on the right I show you the result and depending on how much I blur, my edge detection looks very different. Now let me zoom out completely. You see I'm getting like completely different result for the edge detection. Now it also gets softer, but I could of course bring it up again, bring the brightness up or you know do some color corrections afterwards to make it stronger. So that's one idea. Let me deactivate this just as an idea. Another thing you could try is say, okay, I'm happy with where the edges were detected, um, where my pencil strokes are, but I want to refine those pencil strokes by making them harder or softer. So you might add a blur or a sharpening operation after your effect. Again, you can do it in the color page, you can do it in Fusion, wherever you feel more comfortable. Let me do it in Fusion and let me add a unsharp mask, which is the Fusion tool for sharpening. And now, you see here with the gain, uh, gain control and the size control, one is the sharpening radius and the other one is like how strong it becomes. I can use this to make this like harder and yeah, to clear out some of the remaining fuzziness that I have here. And you see my result here is quite different from what I got from the standard Resolve FX. Let me show the last option and this one will be a bit more advanced for those of you who are sometimes doing stuff in 3D as well. Um, so there we have another option, let me show you. I will bring in an image plane and bring my train onto that image plane. And then I will immediately bring in a render node. Now normally we would have a camera node first, but you know what? If I don't really want to do camera animations. So I will just do the following. I will just adjust the um, Z position of the image plane so that it fills the, the render node with the default camera position that the render node uses if there is no other camera. This is around it. So this way I have filled the frame. But now I don't really want to bring the image into 3D, but instead I want to bring a texture and I want to get three-dimensional detail on that image plane from a texture and a processing efficient way to do that is the bump map. Uh, so to do that I need to add a material and the simplest material we have is the Blin material. I can add this. This is also the one that is pre-built. If you look into material, if you disconnect it, um, what you have here is a blend material, but if you add it from externally, then you have additional inputs. And one of them is the bump map input, which can take, as the name suggests, a bump map. So if you look here, you have a bump map material input. And I attach the bump map, and then I use my media for the bump map. And in the bump map, I use height map based on luminance. And what that does, if I look at the image plane, and enable lighting, what that does is it kind of adds structure like local changes based on luminance. So the stronger the luminance, you know, the stronger the changes and those local uh, changes are being calculated based on the direction of light. So we are not actually changing the 3D geometry. You could do that with the displacement, but then you need a lot of 3D geometry in order to get like these fine details. You would need a hell lot of 3D geometry. And this is a more processing efficient way where you kind of simulate the 3D depth by faking it, uh, doing local calculations based on the direction of light um, and the luminance value that's coming in. And this is giving like local shadows, uh, yeah, based on that, that structure that we take from the luminance input. And this is what we are getting here. So in order to see something on the render node, we need to enable lighting and need to add a light. So let me bring in a light. And here we have one. And yeah, I just added a spotlight. And we 
can bring it further back and you see here these highlights you see some specular highlights which could look nice especially if you want something like metallic or so if you don't want that you go into the material and disable the specularity so specularity is like how mirror like or how shiny the material is if you bring it to zero then it's not shiny anymore and i could bring up the light further if i want a really strong like black and white paint effect then this is pretty close again to what we had before and yeah if you want again the same pre and post processing that i did before if i wanted uh, the other way around uh, black over white i have pretty much the same effect as i had before why would i go into 3d in order to create the same that i could get from a 2d filter well probably i wouldn't um, however there are of course other things that you could do from 3d if you want to add like 3d camera movement or if you want to play with that specularity or start to move the light around or um, you know those kind of things you could have a thousand ideas of of what to do for example i might reduce the intensity again and play with this cone here you know to to just show some area and then reveal something i'm sure there are lots of ideas that i haven't tried yet but i just wanted to show you the the starting point um, if you want to play a little bit in 3d and come up with different effects from there However you create the effect, you might want to combine it with some actual digital painting so that you well, have a combination of automatically built paint effect and some manual painting, which I think can give some nice results. Let me show you what I mean. I use this mountain picture, which is from the contest. So if you are participating, you can use this picture or another picture from the contest. And here I have used the standard pencil uh, sketch effect and inverted it with the brightness and contrast uh, but now what I want to do is I kind of want to reveal this sketch from the photo or the other way around sketch and then reveal the photo whatever you like so I will bring in a merge like this and in the merge I might start to reveal something in a in a paint way and the way I would do this is just use a polygon stroke and let's say we, we want to bring out these mountains here in the back. I might draw like some, some strokes, maybe a bit of zigzag or however you, you think painting should, should work. And obviously I don't want to make like a hundred strokes, but I want to make it like, like quick and simple. Let me bring this polygon in, give it a border width. And now you see how the paint is being revealed. Or of course we could start from black and then uh, reveal the paint instead of the picture. Maybe that looks even better. Let's do that. Let me start from a black background and kind of reveal the mountain. And I need to animate this so I will use the length of the stroke to animate it. So start from zero and if you at zero you still have the border width so if you don't want that you could you know just deactivate it on frame zero maybe then frame one bring it up or animate the border width as well and then over maybe 20 frames or however long you want we'll bring it up and perhaps i'll uh, make another polygon to constrain this so let me draw a polygon um, down here so i might make a second one for this mountain if i want to paint here and I will use this in another way as well which you will see in a second. So let me name them. So this is mountain back paint and this is mountain the boundary and I will use this and subtract it. So this way I have I'm only painting the mountain in the back but when you have a shape like this you could also use it in a different way. Let me make a copy and show you what I mean. I can also use a shape like this and bring in a background. Let's say a white background. Use that shape. And then in the polygon make this not solid but only use the outline like this. And I can then use this to draw and draw an outline. So I'm demonstrating this on the other mountain here. 
I'm drawing an outline. And you might combine this, for example, draw an outline first and then fill the mountain with a paint effect like this. And if you combine both, then I can show you here from the preview how it looks like. This I have done now over a photograph, which is of course simpler because my drawings don't need to be animated. But of course you can do it over video. You just need to either keyframe your polygons or somehow track them to a moving image. So it gets a little bit more complicated, but it's still doable. Uh, these two ideas of drawing like an outline and drawing that over the frame and filling the frame with drawing strokes, I think these two ideas can already be very powerful. Uh, there's certainly more that you could try, put in gradients, different color corrections, animate your parameters, animate your drawing parameters, blend them in in different ways. So there are certainly a million different things how you could come up with your own unique um, drawing style. So give it a try, have fun with it, play around with it, learn something new. That's also the idea of my contest. Again, if you're watching this video as it comes out, then Please take part, enjoy and maybe win a prize. And otherwise, thanks for watching and see you in the next tutorial. Cheers.